I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines. Dan May Island is a 72-acre island on Florida's west coast, north of Cedar Key, accessible only by boat or by seaplane. WMNF's Chris Young reports that Friday, the Department of Environmental Protection Acquisition and Restoration Council voted to approve conservation funds for the island. The property is surrounded by the Lower Suwannee National Wildlife Refuge. It is set to be added to Florida's Conservation and Recreation Lands Acquisition Program called Florida Forever. Andrew Goode with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service spoke in support during public comment. One of my missions in life is to work to preserve places that are in the middle of nowhere for public recreation and wildlife conservation. And this island, this area is truly the middle of nowhere. Spanish artifacts from the 1800s have been found on the island. A lodge dating back to the 1930s is also there. Mike Allen is with the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. It's not an easy place to get to. There's no road to this to this area. It's a uh, it's a it's a bit of a of a boat ride. And but we are we have a boat captain and multiple vessels and, and operations going on in the region. So I've committed to provide logistical support to both state, federal agencies, and to university folks that want to use this area for research. The motion to add the land passed unanimously. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young. In Florida's new African-American history standards, the section covering race massacres tells teachers to instruct students about acts of violence, quote, against and by African-Americans, unquote. As WMFE's Joe Burns reports, that both sides' approach drew outrage at a town hall in Orlando on Saturday. The meeting started with Lift Every Voice and Sing. Two descendants of Okoe and Rosewood massacre victims spoke out against the new standards. Tampa area pastor Stephen Nunn is a great-grandson of Okoe's July Perry, who was lynched in the 1920 Election Day killings. Not just black people, but all students and all people deserve nothing less than the truth. They deserve to understand justice and the equality of our ancestors of the blood, sweat, and tears that were shared yesterday and it has brought us to where we are today. Also at the meeting, an attorney with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law said the group is working on a legal challenge. In Orlando, I'm Joe Burns. The Orlando Weekly reported that last week, Java Communications acquired the Orlando Weekly along with independent publications like Creative Loafing Tampa and others from Cleveland's Euclid Media Group. The Texas-based company also acquired Local Culture, a full-service marketing agency. Major League Baseball is looking into social media posts involving Rays shortstop Wander Franco. He did not play in yesterday's 9-2 loss to Cleveland. The team said in a statement, quote, During today's game, we were made aware of the social media posts that are circulating regarding Wander Franco. We take the situation seriously and are in close contact with Major League Baseball as it's conducting its due diligence, unquote. Inflation remains hotter in the southern U.S. compared to the rest of the nation. Consumer prices were up 3.8% in July compared to a year ago across the southeast from Maryland to Florida, and it continues to be stronger in bigger cities. WLRN's senior economics editor Tom Hudson says while price hikes have slowed from the 40-year high last summer, expensive housing is keeping inflation elevated. 90% of the small increase in the national July inflation rate was attributed to shelter, home, and rent costs, the same contributors to our regional inflation rate. If it weren't for housing inflation, prices in the Miami region were up less than 1% earlier this summer. The national inflation rate was up 3.2% in July, slightly stronger than June. Six former Mississippi law officers who tortured two black men will plead guilty to state-level charges for the racist assault. The episode ended with one officer shooting one of the victims in the mouth. The ex-officers admitted their guilt in a connected federal civil rights case last week. Prosecutors say the corrupt officers, all of whom are white, nicknamed themselves the Goon Squad because of their tendency to use excessive force and cover it up. The state charges included home invasion, obstruction of justice, conspiracy to hinder prosecution, and aggravated assault. The charges come after an investigation by the Associated Press linked some of the officers to at least four violent encounters with black men since 2019. A small central Kansas police department is facing a torrent of criticism after it raided the offices of a local newspaper and the home of its publisher and owner. Marion County record publisher and editor Eric Myers said police raided the newspaper's office on Friday. 
seizing the newspaper's computers, phones, and file server, and the personal cell phones of staff based on a search warrant investigating alleged identity theft. Police simultaneously raided Meyer's home, seizing computers, his cell phone, and the home's internet router. Myers blames the stress of the home raid for the Saturday death of his 98-year-old mother. Press Freedom Watchdogs condemned the raids. A heat advisory is expected from 11 a.m. this morning until 7 p.m. this evening. Heat index values of up to 112 are expected. Our website, WMNF.org, has information about the symptoms of heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Scattered thunderstorms this morning will become more widespread this afternoon. Expect near record high temperatures in the mid-90s. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible tomorrow as well. And we're going to have overnight lows tonight near 80 I'm Josh Holton with the WMNF News Headlines on 88.5 FM and the WMNF app. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa. 